Who really was Wallara Wari Benelong? We know the name well enough, but who was the man? My passion is that Benelong's life be known about, that people know about the life of people in early Sydney. We owe so much to him in having been the interpreter, having been the go-between, uh, who gave freely uh, and willingly uh, information about clans, uh, kinship, uh, and vocabulary is very important. Last year I was on leave in January and I was looking at the Sydney press at the time and there were some reports about Ben Long's grave being found and some controversy about you know what to do with the grave site. And while I was on leave I just mused to myself that I bet when I get back this will be on my desk to sort out and of course when I came back it was. Look at the time there uh, was some research being done by Dr Keith Vincent Smith the story then was they were going to do an exhibition of some of the paintings you actually see in the website. But the only problem with that is the exhibition would have been on for a two week period, um, only accessible to a, a small number of people in that particular time. So we thought that we could tell a story that needed to be told more effectively by developing up a some sort of multimedia or web based resource that we could market to a broad audience really, so to schools, to museums and anybody who was interested. There are some pretty particular protocols that you have to keep in mind when you're working with Indigenous communities. That was always in the forefront of my mind. So this had to be a project where Indigenous, indigenous people needed to be involved, they had to have their say, and it wasn't just based on the sort of the research we had. As I said before, we wanted to make this part contemporary. I was thrilled to work on this Indigenous interpretation and education project. As a non-Aboriginal person, I wanted to ensure that we tell Benelong's story in a way that does him justice, that contemporary Aboriginal people will approve of, and that audiences will find useful and engaging, thus helping them to form additional insights from this fascinating history. As a research tool, Finding Benelong website needed to be credible, so to supplement our own creative, technical and project management a team which included Jason Stevenson, Simon Olson, Asan Rove and Veronica Medina, we brought in additional expertise in Indigenous consultation, in heritage and interpretive storytelling. And that brought Sue McIntyre, Tamoy, Graham Wilson and Peter Tonkin into the fold. We also worked in close collaboration throughout the project with the Project Steering Committee, which involved a number of different perspectives and a wealth of knowledge in Peter Mitchell and Keith Vincent Smith in particular. Discovering was the, the most interesting part of the whole thing. And working with some very, very distinguished people like Peter Mitchell and Keith Vincent Smith, um, who have um, this enormous wealth of knowledge. Very early on in the piece we thought what we'd like to do is present something that shows the complexity of the person and allows and puts the onus on, in fact, the person using the website, the researcher, um, to actually think um, and to make some sort of judgments for themselves. I think one of the great things about it is it has different levels of information. So it's, it's got something that people can grab good handful of information straight off, but those who really want to check it out to see how accurate it is can go deeper, so it's really, really good. It's, it, it's very engaging for people visually, uh, for starters, but it also um, yeah, presents uh, the, the beautiful part with the primary resources, which in, in this area we're fortunate to have, have a, a few of, with the Sydney journals and that from the early settlers. People in Sydney must be aware of the history, and it tells us that Sydney has an ancient past. It's not just something that was founded in 1788. Uh, it goes way back. Seeing how people are embracing the idea that even though it's a, it's a white discovery in the sense of, you know, Benelong's burials allegedly found and so forth, seeing that people are willing to try to step back and see an Aboriginal perspective and try to understand that Aboriginal people get concerned about always the white discovery in Australia and actually seeing that Aboriginal people have always been on the other side looking back, you know, not discovering anything other than the sort of invaders and the discoverers. So in their sense, Aboriginal people are discovering layer after layer of other people discovering them and their history and their story. 
So seeing how people were really prepared to work to bridge that gap, it's been really exciting. So I think it's very rare that you can find a source that is accessible to young people, but also provides them with provocative thoughts and information and the trail back to the sources. I think it should get people thinking. History is not meant to answer questions, but to provide people with the right questions to ask. Money, money, money.